Welcome to our online worship for First English Lutheran Church, Baltimore. This is the second Sunday of Advent, December 6, 2020. This is also St. Nicholas Day. St. Nicholas was a third century bishop who became known for secret gifts, and he was the possible prototype for St. Nick or Santa Claus. We begin with our confession and assurance. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Lord God, on this second Sunday of Advent, we gather in wonder in your presence. Even if our lives are so different this year, we come humbled and honored to know that you love us so much that you were willing to come and live among us. And now we say together, Lord, your love and faithfulness knows no bounds. Like the faithful who have gone before us, may we be faithful to you in prayer, in our living, and in our being. We are sorry for those times when we are at fault with you or others. Hear us now in a moment's silence as we confess our faults and failings. Forgive us, O Lord, as you have promised, and help us to begin anew. Guide us by your Spirit and make us strong and confident disciples, always willing to walk in your way. So be it. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please share that peace with people in your household, online, in some way. Share that peace somewhere. And now we will have our first song, which is O Come, All Ye Faithful, verses 1 and 2, sung by our cantors, Dorothy Stahlberg and Donna Tatro. of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Our prayer of the day, if you have it, is printed on page six of your bulletin. Let us pray together. Loving Lord, when we have strayed, you have called us to come home to you. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. With all our hearts we return to you and gratefully accept your gentle love. For the sake of the one whose spirit lives in us, Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Amen. And now we will have our Advent litany in the midst of COVID, written by Nora Worthington. We do not even try to understand each other. In the midst of blindness, love embraces Come, come, come love to us, us in God's, God's own Son, and, and 
and bring our hearts to God as one. appointed psalm for the day is Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13, which we will read responsively by verse. If you have a Bible, you will be reading verses 9, 11, and 13. I will read 8, 10, and 12 of Psalm 85. It's also found in your bulletin on page 7. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. And now the reading of Joel, chapter 2, will be read by Miranda Ivenko. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Then afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I know one of the themes of Advent is to keep awake, but I have been so tired. I am so tired. I'm tired of the extra work to do things remotely, and I'm tired of not going to movie theaters or eating in restaurants, and I'm tired of crossing off canceled things from my calendar. I'm tired of rescheduled sports games due to COVID infection, and tired of watching the rising rates of the infected, the hospitalized, and the deaths. I'm just tired. So. When I read the first part of today's very short lesson from the book of Joel, honestly, I just want to skip over it. Fasting? Weeping? Mourning? Haven't we had enough? Rending or tearing your heart sounds painful, and my heart already feels torn up. What I'd like to do is jump to Christmas, jump to the future. I'm actually nearly done with my Christmas baking of cookies and bars, and I just mailed off a big batch of, I think, all of the Christmas cards I'm going to mail on Thursday. I only need a few more gifts, so I feel like I'm jumping forward to Christmas, but I think that's maybe more of a defense mechanism than anything else. I tell myself I'm getting ready for Christmas, and I think that makes me take a big step toward being at Christmas, but ah, 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 Joel beckons me to take a giant step back. We need to stay in that mode of reflection and awareness of Advent just a little bit longer. Of course, Joel, the book of Joel, wasn't speaking directly to us and our COVID fatigue. For Joel, the big problem was locusts, a plague of locusts. Those flying grasshopper-like things were causing massive problems in the time of Joel. Now, it may seem like locusts are just this biblical pests, but 
This very year, there was a swarm of locusts darkening the skies in the Horn of Africa. Even in our current time, locusts, locusts, can decimate fields of crops and cause poverty and starvation. Usually locusts are just these unremarkable insects who kind of hang out. You don't even notice them, but every once in a while, the conditions are just right. The, the atmosphere, the rain level, all of a sudden, they overpopulate, they coordinate, and they swarm. In Joel's time, the locusts were devouring all plant life, so food was cut off. Then fires destroyed everything else. That dried up the water. Every living creature suffered, and these hardships were seen as a time of the day of the Lord, a reckoning of sorts. It was the day of the Lord was coming, and they were, they were expecting earthquakes, and the sun and the moon would be darkened. Wow, that does not get us in the holiday spirit, does it? Plagues and suffering. The thing is, we are facing a type of plague of our own, something environmental, that found the right conditions to spread, infect, and kill. And even though Christmas is only two and a half weeks away, the reality of the here and now is that we, like the people in Joel's time, in some way or another, we are suffering. It looks pretty bleak. But then, there it is. In the book of Joel, God promises hope for the earth, the animals, the people. God says, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Now when I hear return to the Lord your God, it seems abundantly clear that we've wandered away. Why else would there be a call to return? Who could blame the, the locusts? We can't really blame them. We can't really blame coronavirus. Our brokenness is bigger than anything like that. Even without a pandemic, we would still need to reflect on our unfaithfulness. There's something else that distances us from God. It might be small. It might be something you think, oh, that doesn't matter. God won't care. It might be a, a joke that's off color that you shouldn't have said, that you should have interrupted, that you should have clarified. Maybe we're judging whose voices warrant our attention and dismiss the narratives that we just don't want to take the time to understand. Maybe what we're doing is just complaining more than loving. We look the other way when we know we could help. Somehow or other, we find ourselves in the darkness of December, and COVID or not, we are not where we want to be. Our hearts are not where we want them to be. And that's when we hear, return to the Lord your God, for he's gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. We've actually heard those exact words in the Bible several times. The first time is in Exodus 34, when Moses was getting that duplicate set of tablets for the Ten Commandments. The originals were smashed after the people decided to create a golden bull calf statue and worship that. And so God was giving them, you know, part two. And after all of that sinning, God renewed the commandments and God proclaimed that God was gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. These godly qualities are repeated also in the book of Numbers, in Nehemiah, in the Psalms, in Jonah. God's desire is to welcome back all people, all flesh, and God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. There are no limits. God wants everyone, every single person, every man and woman, young and old, powerful and powerless, everyone, all colors and shapes, sizes, sexual orientations, ages. God wants us to dream dreams and see visions through the power of the Holy Spirit. There is hope in Joel's locust-ravaged world, and we have hope, too, in our divided nation when we are so tired. Dreams are coming. Visions are coming. God is coming. Hope is the theme of Advent. We hope, we long for God to forgive us and offer a hand of reconciliation. 
We fall short of what we could be, and so we turn to God, waiting, wanting, longing for God to forgive. And so today we've lit the second of the Advent candles as we wait and anticipate Christ coming to cleanse us of our sins, to reincorporate, to gather us in. That forgiveness begins here with us when worship is over. You don't just like push end or turn off your computer and walk away, well, that's done. No, we have to take that forgiveness that we know is ours and share it with the world. Where can you share forgiveness at home or work or school in the coming week, even if they're online? How can we offer forgiveness when someone challenges us to see beyond age, race, color, or status? We need to bring that kind of forgiveness to our lives the rest of the week and try, really try, to see all people as someone valued and loved by God. The grace and mercy slowness to anger, steadfast love, and desire to forgive. It's not just for us. It's for all people who return to the Lord. And so in this season of being perhaps more tired than usual, this season of being distracted, maybe what the lesson is telling us is that forgiveness may be the best way to prepare for Christmas. That forgiveness begins with us. God forgives you. And so you can forgive yourself and then pass that forgiveness on. Rebuild a broken relationship. Work on patience with those you don't understand. Let go. And maybe those dark days we sometimes experience will be lightened by the love of God. Return to the Lord your God and see God pour out his spirit on all flesh. Amen. There are a couple of questions that are printed in your bulletin, and you're welcome to just think about them on your own. The first one is that Joel's message offers hope despite mistakes. We all make mistakes, right? Do you have relationships that you'd like to mend? What steps can you take to say you're sorry? I think we all have a few of those. And number two, God offers gifts to all flesh. Are there people in our society whose gifts are not appreciated or recognized? Just think about, like, is there somebody you just disregard or somebody who is disregarded overall by others? Things to think about. And now we continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we offer the prayers of intercession. After each petition, you will hear, Lord, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. And there will be a, a small, silent time if you would like to include other prayers. Feel, feel, feel free to just say them out loud or just in your heart wherever you are at home. Keeping awake as we watch for Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience, 
sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially for a healing of our nation and peace in Ethiopia, Lebanon, Belarus, and the Church in the Holy Land. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even disparities between your people as nothing. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing embrace. We pray especially for among our neighbors, or among our, our members, Jack, Alice, Frankie, Judy, Doris, Andy, Kathy, Dolores, David, Helen, Chris, Carol, Richard, Barbara, and the Stahl family, and among our friends. We pray for Keith, Susan, William, Helen, Ron, Danielle, Cheryl, William, Jim, Mary, Penny, Sonia, Chantal, T, Jay and family, Tom, Jim and Peggy, David, Norma, Marcia, Bill, Frank, Jody and Audrey, Laura, Paul, Jennifer. And we pray for those who are grieving at this time. We ask you to be with the family and friends of Russ Rusinoff, um, Paul's father who died recently. Be with the family and friends of Peter Wessler, who is in charge of the Academy of Lutheran Summer Music Program. We ask you to be with the friends and family of Admiral Joel Williams, who died recently as well as those we remember now silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we ask you to watch over essential workers and bless those who are working for the common good. Be with individuals and families adjusting to this ongoing pandemic. Watch over those who protest for equality and the police who watch over them. Open the ears of leaders so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, our community cries to you. Bless the city of Baltimore and our online mission field. For our leaders, Donald, Larry, and Jack, and the newly elected leaders, Joe and Brandon, guide our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, Strengthen those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house. For our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue our faithful work, especially St. Nicholas of Myra. Make their generous lives an example for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we come, time, uh, come to the place where we have our offering. We're not passing a plate, but we are passing on a request that you support our ministry. And you can do that by text, and you can just text the dollar amount to the information that will be shown shortly. Or you could uh, mail in an offering or go to our website and click on the giving button and make a donation. Thank you for your support.
And we will also have some offering music, Come Lord Maranatha, verse 2, which will be sung by Nora Worthington with piano by Matthew Olmsted. Now is the time, prepare the way, salvation. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray for all who are in need with the prayer Jesus taught us. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And since we cannot take communion right now because of the pandemic, we offer a prayer of spiritual communion. Most holy God, during these times when we worship online, let us be the living body and blood of Christ. Bless us through the Holy Spirit to accept and offer forgiveness to our communities so that we can share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us now and forever. Amen. And now the announcements for mission. A lot of these are found on our Facebook page and our website, and if you're one of our church family, uh, you've received an email with them. But I'd just like to remind you, if you're part of our community, we have a virtual coffee hour following this worship, so you're welcome to join if you like. Uh, we have an open mic night that is coming up, which is really a Christmas carol sing-along, and that will be December 18th, and there's information about that. A Christmas carol sing-along should be fun. Council is coming up on Tuesday at 6, and we will be having a blue Christmas service online on Monday, December 21st, which is the winter equinox. Um, we have an Advent Bible study, which we're doing at 9 o'clock on Sundays before worship, so if you're interested in that, you can contact me for the Zoom information, or if you're one of our community, you've already received the email about that. Um, what we would really love is for you to share your Christmas photos with us. We, again, we can't be together, but if you could take a picture of your Christmas cookies or your Christmas tree or your decorations, and we'll just share that with each other as a sort of a photo montage as part of our worship. So please just send those to me if you have that available. We have ongoing Bible studies on Thursdays at 6.30 and at 1 p.m. 6.30 a.m. <laughs> at 1 p.m. And um, we also have a lot of different places where you can serve writing letters, making donations, or volunteering your time, and all of that is on our, uh, again, on our Facebook page or our website. Uh, so there's lots of different things going on, and please check it out. We'd love for you to be part of our, of our, of our ministry, right? Uh, and now the commissioning. We have worshiped together in love for new beginnings. Now may God's blessing of love be with us this day, this week, this Advent season. Our ending song is People Look East, verses 1 and 4, sung by our cantors Melanie Diaz-Dodson and Chet Myers. Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> 